how's it going rednecks? In the years that I've been off-roading, I've always had onboard air with me. In my uh, blue Tahoe, it was driven from the AC compressor. And more recently, 12-volt compressors have become way more available, so I've been using them. Now, I've had this one here for about four years, this one right here for about two years, and recently, I wanted to purchase another one. So I went to Harbor Freight and got that guy. Now what we're going to do, since I have all of these compressors, I want to do a comparison video to see which ones perform better and how they perform. So what do you say we get started by going over specifications of each one and then we'll get to testing. Now the testing for each one of these compressors isn't going to be completely fair because if you take a look, the Avi Air 88P, which is this guy right here, I bought on 329 of 2018. The current price for this compressor is $88.95. It's claiming 1.47 CFM, and its recommended tire size is a 33. For the second compressor, the Avi Air 87P, I bought this on 97 of 2020, and the current price for that is $76.99. It is 1.26 CFM, and they recommend a 31 inch tire or smaller. And now for the Pittsburgh. I purchased this compressor on 7.5 of 2022. Um, the current price is $74.99. It's claiming online 1.35 CFM, but on the box that it came in was 1.5 CFM, and it claims a tire rating of 31 inches or smaller. Now, as you can see with them all laid out, there's a variation of uh, accessories and different stuff that comes with them. Now, the 88P, comes just as you see right here. It's just a coil of wire with the hose and no case. Where the 87P comes with a carrying case and then if you come over to the Harbor Freight, it's even more different. It has a case, but the hose is detachable and it's a slinky style where the other ones are just a standard hose. Now with all the specifications out of the way, I want to go over what I plan on doing for uh, testing. And the plan is to first check the length of the cord, the hose, and then the overall reach of each compressor. And then I wanna do a PSI test and temperature check of each one at one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, and five minute marks to see how hot the compressor body gets as well as how fast is it inflating my tire. And the tire of choice is gonna be right here. This is a 265, 75, 16. And it's the equivalent of 31.6 inch tire. So it should feed these ones pretty well. Technically it's going to be underrated for this, but overrated for that. So we'll see what the uh, pressure is at after the uh, five minute mark. So that's pretty impressive. That right there is the 88P. And you can see how far the hose goes out. And I have all the uh, ends lined up. And that one ended up with a cord length of 115 inches, 188 inch hose, and an overall length of 103. Now with the Vi Air 87P, you can see the hose ended right around there. And once again, the connectors are lined up. And that one had a hose length or cord length of 118 inches with a hose length of 90 with a total overall length of 108. And the Pittsburgh, by far, extended further than the rest of them. And once again, here's the connectors lined up. And if you take a look, the cord length on the Pittsburgh was 118 inches with a hose length of 270 and an overall length of 388 inches. Now with the Pittsburgh being longer, the problem with that is it's a fight. There's constant tension right here. As you've seen, I have a wrench on it where the other two don't need it. As well as, if you take a look, these ones are more relaxed where this one's kind of pinched off. So I have a feeling if you're going to be going that far, you're going to be pushing this to the limit, either that or you're going to have to bring the hose this way. But with that being said, I am really impressed with how far that Pittsburgh hose will go. Now, what do you say we get these uh, hooked up one at a time to the Yukon and we try to inflate that tire. 
Now there's uh, three things I want to go over before I start the uh, testing. The first thing being is I'm going to try and go to the furthest location, which would be the battery in the left front corner and the tire all the way in the right rear. The second thing is I want all these tests to be fair, so I'm going to get this engine warmed up and while it's warming up we're going to go over the uh, third thing. And then the third and final thing is, is I'm going to pull the core out of the tire until the rim is sitting on the ground, put the core back in, and then we're going to start inflating it. Alright, with the uh, tire deflated, I have the 88P hooked up. And I don't have it hooked up to the tire yet. I wanted to show you how much hose there was left over just to give you an idea if this uh, will work for your vehicle or not. So I'm going to get it hooked up. I'm going to get take my phone and set a one minute timer. And at one minute I'll start logging the temperature and pressure and then we'll start it over every minute. And I'll get back with you once I have all five minutes. With the 88P all set, I'd say that thing performed pretty good. Um, this is about 110 degrees with a few hotter spots on it. We'll go over the results here in a little bit. But first I want to test the other two. So what do you say we get the 87P set up and we uh, start that testing. Man oh man, with the 87P hooked up, you can see there is hardly any holes left over. And that's with the power cord stretched across the engine bay. On the 88P, I actually ran the cord along here down along the fender and then set the compressor down here. But I couldn't even make that happen. I'm surprised I'm even gonna be able to make this work. As you can see, she's stretched to the uh, very limits right there. And that's just past the uh, valve stem. So with the uh, tire deflated, I'm gonna put the valve stem back in and we're gonna get testing underway on the uh, 87P. <laughs> Man oh man, the 87P did not perform as bad as I thought it would. She's still pretty hot, but to give you an idea, this has been sitting here the whole time and it's just slightly warm. So in about seven minutes, this thing warmed down, uh, cooled down. And I imagine it's gonna be the same for this guy, but what do you say we get the uh, Pittsburgh set up and we start the process all over again. With the uh, Pittsburgh hooked up, as you can see, I have the cord running like the 88P. And I will say, I like the uh, lead-ins on the uh, Pittsburgh, as well as, if you take a look, the cord stretches well past the tire. And I actually wrapped around and hooked it onto my wiper blade arm just so I could uh, hold it in place. But there's a lot more cord there than I'm even going to use. So what do you say we get hooked up to that flat tire and we uh, start testing this thing? Well, there we go. With the uh, Pittsburgh all done and set, we can go over the uh, information we found out. Now, starting at the 88P, you can see after one minute, the temperature was at 98 degrees and the pressure was at 77.3. And after five minutes, we came up to 136 degrees with 35.4 um, PSI in the tire. And our outside temp right now is 85, just to give you a reference for that. Now the Vi Air 87P started out after one minute at 100 degrees with 6.4 PSI. If you look at the numbers, we ended up at 141 degrees with 30.2 PSI. And ending on the Pittsburgh, 
After one minute, our temperature was 87 degrees with 6.4 PSI with an ending temperature at 132 degrees after five minutes and 30.6 PSI. So here's a quick chart with all the information on it, the 88P in blue, the 87P in red, and the Harbor Freight in gray. And as you can see, the PSI chart, both the Harbor Freight and 87P end up about the same. And for the temperature chart, they were all about identical as well with only a few degrees between them. And then afterwards, I packaged up both the 87P and the Harbor Freight one and disconnecting the holes on the Harbor Freight made it a heck of a lot easier to put away as well as the bag was bigger. So it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed that the Pittsburgh was able to keep up with the uh, 87P. Considering this is a very good and well-known brand company and that's kind of a lower end, but keep in mind, I guess this uh, compressor is two years old and I have used it quite a bit, but yeah, for each their own, I guess I would say this one's good for trucks and SUVs. That one with how short the cording is, I would keep it to cars. And that one's good for trucks and SUVs in emergency situations. I don't think I would uh, rely on that out on the trails or as a long-term solution. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and get back to work.